They're jerks. They're murderers. They went around breaking people's fingers for smoking and uh, you know, conscripting people out of, out of, just kicking in doors and conscripting who they wanted to fight for them. And the people of Iraq don't want an Islamic state, and, and they've just proven, even though we brought al-Qaeda to their country, they've just proven that they can handle them without our help. And all this about the new high technology means retina scans. It means they grab a guy, they do a retina scan, and if the database back in America says he's an insurgent, they murder him. Uh, you know, that is shoot him dead. And uh, that's supposed to be, uh, that's supposed to uh, be what we're supposed to uh, give all this great credit for the success of the surge. When in fact all that happened was that Al-Qaeda pushed their luck and the local Iraqis decided to stop allowing them to exist nearby them. That's all. Three minutes, Dr. Kushner. Okay, let me speak with some knowledge of this from fact, not from fiction. Um, when I was an expert on the embassy bombing trial, the United States versus Osama bin Laden, it was shown to us uh, how many uh, people uh, actually went through the Al-Qaeda training camps in Afghanistan. And according to government records and files, and I also worked for the INS with this, the asylum division, upwards of 70,000 to 150,000 people went through the training camps in Afghanistan, card-carrying members of Al-Qaeda. So it's not just a few thousand. And that was many, many years ago. And, and these individuals spread their venom worldwide. So Al-Qaeda is, is a very strong and a very significant organization worldwide. And it's in 60 countries worldwide and has uh, you know, bases here in the United States on the different names. Uh, I, I think the question was what, uh, what I would have done after 9-11. Uh, I, I certainly knew and others knew that the Taliban and Al-Qaeda was responsible for 9-11. But we were in a position after 9-11, we didn't have our troops mobilized. We were literally caught with our pants down. We had a fifth column inside the United States, including inside our Congress, including others. Uh, it took us a while to rally the troops to go into Afghanistan. I would have went into Afghanistan much quicker than, than we did. Uh, unfortunately, it took us that amount of time to build up enough for a coalition and to get the American people ready to do so. But uh, to, to say that uh, uh, Al-Qaeda are a bunch of criminals, uh, that's what the gentleman would like you to believe. They're not criminals. They're terrorists who have a specific ideology linked to a specific religion. And you diminish them by calling them criminals. Do you want your local law enforcement to deal with terrorists? No, I want the military to deal with terrorists. You don't grab terrorists and you put them in trial here in your courts. You kill them. You do the surge. It's a mistake to think that they're just criminals. If they're just criminals, there's a, a finite amount. This is an infinite amount. Using the numbers that the Saudis use, using the numbers that Indonesians use, using the numbers that even the Iranians use or any other Islamic country, they say that the, at most 10% of their population is problematic. Well, if you have 1.5 billion Muslims in the world, you're looking at 150 million people who are here to kill you. And so it's not a significant thing. You just can't call them criminals, but criminals diminishes, in fact, the threat. And the threat is serious. So I would have went into Afghanistan way before we did, and I would also have went in preemptively into other regions in that world as well. Yes, my question is to both uh, participants. Um, September 11th is not only a significant date uh, in 2001, but uh, less than 100 years before this country was founded in 1683, when the second major Islamic Jihad invasion of uh, Europe was defeated at the gates of Vienna. Now, uh, as far as this Islamic terrorism basis, um, if you actually watch the videos of the martyrs, um, they don't justify their actions because America has bases in Saudi Arabia. They justify their actions with the teachings and the text of the Quran and the Sunnah. I would like both of y'all to address that fact, that their motivation comes from Islamic text and teachings and not occupation of bases. We'll start with Dr. Kushner this time, three minutes. Well, I, agree, I agree with that statement. Uh, I think it's um, a mistake to consider that uh, America's presence or America's behavior is instigating um, the action of um, uh, militant Islam worldwide. I think this is something that's been festering for centuries. Uh, it continues to do so. Uh, I, I think the example of militant Islam uh, exists from the 14, 15, 16, 17, going to every, every century, and I think there is inspiration found 
within their holy book. Uh, certainly, I don't think anyone can deny that. People will argue that it certainly is misinformation and that it's a religion that's been hijacked because political correctness has unfortunately taken over the scene of commenting on things. Uh, and I think we make a, a major mistake when we elevate uh, Islam to a religion comparable to Judeo-Christian heritage that this country was founded under. Uh, because quite frankly, I think the comp one major component of Islam is politics, and I don't think there's any separation in Islam between the political variable and the religious variable. But what we fail to see here is we've talked about it as a religion, and when you talk about religion, you will put it in a category which you, it's difficult to challenge. And I think we have to realize what it is. It's a political attempt and as well as a religious attempt. Uh, this is why you don't see within Islamic communities this hunger for freedom, this outcry for the fact that um, there are a few Danish cartoons that are published and then you have riots. Um, this doesn't happen. Nobody questions this. Uh, in the New York Museum, they have the Virgin Mary uh, done in feces, and um, I don't see uh, Catholics running uh, uh, down and, and, and turning over cars and, and rioting. But, but that's a, a something that's used around the world by, by Islam. I don't see the National Organization of Women coming up and making statements about how women are treated in that region of the world or how Islam treat, treats women. Uh, I, I think this is, is, is something that needs to be discussed more. And I think we're at a disadvantage. We, we don't realize that the very, that there are uh, the underpinnings of the religion and political aspect itself preaches jihad. In fact, um, at the beginning of this year, in January, um, the Department of Homeland Security, who uh, you know, was called almost a military organization taking over the United States, if that's so, how come they say you can't use the word jihad? In, in describing what we're up against, because it's politically in, incorrect to do that. Uh, it would be the same hypocrisy as during World War II. You, you, you would say we weren't fighting Nazi Germany, we weren't fighting fascist Italy, we weren't fighting Imperial Japan, uh, but we were fighting Blitzkrieg and Kamikaze. Today it's become totally sanitized. You can't put those two words together. So I, I think the general makes a very important point. I think we re realize that we're at war with, with uh, people who have a devout belief that has tenants of it, um, certainly that uh, mean to do us harm. Mr. Horton, three minutes. What bin Laden wants people to believe more than anything is that America's war is against Islam. That's what he says. Don't believe them when they say that the war isn't against Islam. It is. And he doesn't cite our rated movies and he doesn't cite primary elections and the fact that women can vote here and we can own property and pay property taxes for it. Uh, what he cites, according to Michael Scheuer, the former chief of the CIA's bin Laden unit, a man who, by the way, gave Bill Clinton 10 different chances to capture or kill bin Laden before September 11th. So don't just chalk him up as a failure. Uh, Michael Scheuer, who's really the expert's expert in this country on Al Qaeda, says that Osama bin Laden, regardless of what he really thinks and regardless of his motivations for the murders that he commits, that he uses six main selling points. And those selling points are American combat forces on the Arabian Peninsula, the land of Mecca and Medina, American one-sided support for Israel in their conflict with the Palestinians, support for dictatorships across the region, Egypt, Jordan, all the Arabian states, Pakistan, our pressure on those governments to keep the oil price is low. This is kind of outdated. It's back in the 90s, you understand. Uh, and, um, and then lastly, our support for, uh, oh, there was the, the blockade and bombings against Iraq, which have been replaced on the list by the occupations of Iraq and Afghanistan, and our support for Russia, China, and India, and their wars against Muslims. Now, all of these things, you can agree with our policies or you can disagree with them. You could, you could disagree with Osama bin Laden's take on, are we backing China against the Uyghurs? I didn't even know that. Anyway. What matters is these are all real world complaints. He's, he's not citing uh, a bunch of magic and superstition from the 1300s. He's citing actual American policies in the Middle East and this is what is effective for recruitment. 